is a little too far away from the microphone so we haven't okay. started yet we're just prepping to start okay. uh rob are Thanks. there microphones on okay so are you all set yep welcome to the tuesday september the 7th meeting of the montpelier design review committee i will let committee members and staff introduce themselves meredith crandall staff Mary steve Overton, member steve everett member martha smirsky member and Martha is remote. Does Meredith, would you like to review the remote meeting procedures for anybody who is meeting remotely? Yeah, I think I'm going to have to do it just because we are streaming over Orca. Um, I know Martha, at this point, Martha, I figure you know what you're doing. <laughs> it's a remote meeting. <laughs> do you want me to recite them? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll keep this pretty brief. Okay. Uh, okay. So. Do, 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 do. For anybody looking, watching over Orca Media, um, if you get into this meeting and you decide you want to participate, you can do so by using this link here and logging in via the Zoom platform. You can also call in using this phone number and this meeting ID here. Um, if you're trying to log in and you have problems, please email me and I will try and guide you through the process. Um, do, 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 do. If uh, anybody does log in via Orca using the Zoom platform, please know that turning on your video is optional. Um, but through the Zoom platform, you'll be able to see everything that we see on the screen as well. Um, I guess I'm going to skip over most of this and just make a note that. Um, in the event, I do get emails saying that public is trying to attend and they're unable to, the meeting will have to be continued to a time and place certain. Um, if anybody does log in over Zoom and pops in that is unexpected, um, we'll do a little quick rundown as needed on Zoom procedures for, for interacting. I'm gonna now hand this back over to the chair. And just one quick question for you, were any of these highlighted Okay, I see. Yep. Yeah, okay, I did this good. staff yes. NA where necessary on your recommendation form. Okay. Do I hear a motion from one of the committee members to approve the agenda? So moved. And I second it. All in favor of the agenda? Raise Aye. your hand. And Martha. Yes. Okay. The agenda is approved. We can go to the first application for 16 Main Street. Owner, applicant, City of Montpelier, review the relocation of the Girton Park gazebo. And just make sure you're as close as possible to that microphone. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Cameron Niedermeyer. I'm the Assistant City Manager. And I'm not quite sure what you want me to go over in this, but I'll just brief you on what we're doing. We plan on moving the Girton Park uh, gazebo structure off of the bike path where it's currently located and into the 16 main lot. Um, as you can see by our site plan, it will be near the back of the 16 main lot. We have about a 40-foot uh, setback from the sidewalk and a 10-foot setback from the 22 main location. Um, we hope we've gotten some feedback from the community that they wanted it further back on the lot, and we hope that we've accomplished that. Um, we're not changing anything about the Girton Park structure, gazebo structure itself, just relocating it um, to a more open and hopefully welcoming location. Um, there will be some public art going up on 16 Main Street, so we're moving towards making that an active parklet in the city. So what information would you like me to review with you? There are no changes to the structure, it's merely a relocation? Yes, sir. We are Thanks. planning on um, uh, making um, making sure it's bolted down for per flood recommendations, but I think that's the only change to the structure itself. It's like kind of a ramp in the front. There is, yes. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. And Cameron, it's gonna sit on crushed gravel, is that correct? As far as I understand it, that's what DPW's plan is for the relocation, yes. Okay. Do 
Do any of the committee members have any comments, questions, or suggestions? I'm good. I'm good too. If we not, do have yes. public. Would someone from the public like to make a comment? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Am I yes. Live. Uh, Steve Whitaker from Montpelier. Uh, I would like to raise a question of jurisdiction at this point because the Parks Commission only recently at their last meeting became aware that they are the quote owner of this park, that it is in a, in a park and it's subject to their jurisdiction. And they scheduled it for a meeting upcoming uh, to discuss its use, its maintenance problems and possible other locations. This is kind of a preemptive move, the second attempt at a preemptive move to in effect yank it out from under the current users, uh, which I believe is more punitive uh, with a gross disproportionate impact upon the current users. I, I'm not saying I'm supportive of the condition or the way it's been used, but when I say it's a disproportionate impact, it's it, you having a different breakfast cereal in the morning is, is a minor impact compared to basically yanking the only uh, safe semi-private space where the current users uh, congregate. So uh, absent plans to, also there were two other plans or proposals made to the city council to apply for grants to do a design and th neither of those was awarded. So this is not a plan. This is a basically a, a knee-jerk reaction to uh, take it from somewhere and put it somewhere else without a plan around it. Um, Steve, can I, I'm sorry, can I interrupt you for just one second? Sure. So this is an administrative permit, right? And this is design review. So design review committee's only jurisdiction is chapter 220, the design review criteria. They're not, from what you've said so far, nothing you've said so far is something they're gonna be able to address. So the place to put that is actually in writing to my office because I'm the one who's going to be issuing the actual permit. If you want to get that somewhere, I'm, where I'm asking y'all to table it until the Parks Commission, because of the question of um, there's there's nothing there's nothing in the zoning regs. If you even if you bring that to me for Parks Commission, there is nothing in the zoning regs that gives me an avenue to go to Parks Commission review. Um, if the zoning permit for it to be even heard by this commission, um, then that's then by, that's by the parks commission saying that they own it, they want to move it, and where they consider moving it, it's premature for this body to be. Then, then again, that's an appeal of my determination that sent it to the design review committee. Um, so you'd need. I don't understand an appeal of yours. I made a determination that this application was complete and needed to come to the design review committee. So you can either file an appeal of that to the DRB, or when I issue the permit, you can appeal that whole process to the DRB. Um, I don't have anything in my regs, the, the, the way I have to process this, that sends this application through because it came from the city as the applicant. There's nothing in here that says it that it has to be the, the Parks Commission. As the applicant. The but, the, but they own the property. The city does not own it. The Parks Commission owns that's it. That's your opinion. Um, I, body, then again, that's the an appeal. I, I don't want to argue with you anymore about this. You can continue talking if the chair wants. I just wanted to get out there that your comment so far, nothing you say is design review. And so they're not going to have the power to then go through and push it back. That's on me as the, uh, like, which might call me the permit sherpa. So, so talk and no, you can say your comments. I wanted to let you know though that I need them in writing. No, I want to hear them, but I need them. I, I, it would help to have them in writing. I'm saying that the committee, so far, what you've said, the committee. Um, no, my job is to make sure that we're following the rules. And I'm saying questions of You want to come up to the. Mike, so jurisdiction trump all else, and I don't believe you have jurisdiction to be reviewing this because the Parks Commission hasn't submitted a proposal of where they want to move it, and they're a duly elected body, parallel to and separate from the City Council. This is an executive, arbitrary, capricious action meant to be punitive to the people who are currently using it. Again, I have to take the advice of our 
uh, staff advisor. I have to take the advice of our staff advisor that again, we, we're the only criteria we have is we have an existing structure that's being moved, but our design review only addresses, it doesn't address the, what your concerns. Our purview is only in the design of the structure, which is existing. And the fact that it's being moved, it's not changing the design of the structure. The location and the use may be a separate issue. And again, we, we would move this forward in order for you to address your concerns with Meredith and then they can be addressed at that point. But at this point, that we can't, we don't, we can't really hold it up. We have no authority to hold it up a, based on your concerns. You can condition your uh, approval of it on the consent of the Parks Commission. Again, we're, we're advisory. We can move that on and then the Development Review Board based on an appeal can make that decision. But that's not our decision. Yeah, the, the design review committee and even I are very, very limited in what we can condition things on. Um, but if it's they don't just, own it, can I bring a permit to put something on your property and you're going to say you just got to review the permit? I, I think uh, if, if, we, if we approve it, uh, then any changes that either the park commission or anybody brings forth, it's going to have to come back to us. Yeah. And if you're yes. contesting ownership and who signed the application, then send me your documentation of that, because that would mean that the document, that the application I have is wrong. I haven't seen anything from you in writing about that. So if you can send that to me, then I can look at it because the well, permit doesn't get issued. Attention to the park commission stating that they own that. Unit. Again, again, if you could send Don't me whatever you me have in the city's work for it, this is Steven, that is your opinion. Thank you for bringing yeah. it. It's, it's okay, Cameron. It, it, it's not okay that she continually asserts that my opinion and open meeting and public records law are subservient to her whims. So, Stephen, I'm asking you both just not to talk to each other because that's not really what this is all about right now. Um, Cameron, a question for you. Is the yes, sir. transfer of the property actually taking place? Uh, the gazebo is our property as the city. It's a city uh, property, but it's yes. it been turned over to the the park commission that we do need to talk to them about it but no it is a city owned lot city it's owned. a city owned building yes city owns the building the city owns the lot yes and the parks commission is aware of this move sir and i'll also note that paige Gurton is also not in support of this move prior to alternatives being it, she planned to address it with the parks commission so this is a, a usurp, uh, usurp, usurping of prerogative of the Parks Commission and the widow of Judge Gerton to whom the park is uh, in honor of. The, the zoning permit, you know, let, let's, let's hash that part out, please, Stephen. I, I won't be in the office tomorrow, but I'll be in the office on Thursday and I'll be available via email tomorrow. This, this isn't going to get issued first thing tomorrow morning because I have to actually do an administrative site plan report. I, I think what, what I want to determine is that right now is the Park Commission involved? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Parks Commission became aware over the last two meetings. They held an emergency meeting over the encamping policy. And over the last two meetings, they became aware of this park, its maintenance, and its being a park and that their ownership of it necessitates that they take it up and they scheduled it for their next meeting, which is, I believe the day before the next city council business meeting. Uh, Cameron would know that date better than I. Chair, I would like to give some context, I think, because this has become a conversation. Uh, we did as the city staff, along with Paige Garten and park staff um, come up with a plan to relocate Girton Park, which is what we're trying to do. We're trying to make the 16 main lot a parklet. And, um, you know, it is in our jurisdiction. It's a city owned property. And we are just looking to make sure that the DRC is comfortable with our, our move and our plan for this, for the building and for the lot. The plan that was just referred to is not the plan that Paige 
that this the that Paige Girton agreed to is not this plan. Uh, so, it, it, you should know as background that a few weeks ago this was scheduled to be moved uh, at eight o'clock on a Monday morning uh, by uh, Ms. Niedermeyer, and folks were prepared to sit in it and prevent its being moved due to the nature. They had not applied for a DRB review. They did not have parks commission and they do not still do not have city council permission to move it. So these are all uh, cart before the horse issues that are being done. City council has voted to ask for grant money to put a plan together. Both of those plans have failed. Those grant applications have failed. So there is no plan other than this flimsy sheet of paper, which is not agreed to by anybody. Looking at the criteria. Just make sure you're close to the microphone. I don't know if they can. Looking at the criteria that we operate under in our jurisdiction, which is to, to review plans and either say they meet the criteria or they don't. And I, I see nothing that impedes any of the rest of this, whatever you want to do, Stephen. Uh, as a matter of fact, it should expedite things if design review approves this and if it's changed for you know whatever process it comes back and then it's one step out of the way to get done with it so i'm going to make a motion that this be approved actually i'm going to run through the criteria <laughs> first <laughs> and then and then you can then i can do that okay. this it, this is this is our review, the range of our review for any of the projects, and again, we don't usually have to deal with any of the zoning issues. Our purview is for the the project itself, the construction of it, and I'll go through the criteria for new construction. Uh, this is really not new construction; it's only being moved. So they were new construction is only concerned with the materials used possess a kind of type that are appropriate to the district materials fit the neighborhood or reflect the nature and use of the structure. Those are acceptable. It's an existing structure that's previously approved. It's only being moved. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a phys physical record of their time, place <laughs> and use. That's acceptable. Any proposed landscaping shall be compatible with the neighborhood and the site on which the project's located. Acceptable as this is an accessory structure. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash storage, and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screened from public view. Acceptable. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire codes shall be designed. Did I forget a non applicable there? Sorry. Yes. That's you my fault. Call that a non -applicable? Yeah, that's a non applicable. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, respect views of the State House Dome. That's certainly acceptable. Roof shape and equipment. Consider similarity or compatibility with roof shapes and immediate areas. Conceal rooftop equipment. And in this particular case, there is none, so that's acceptable. Architectural features, limited to, but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tabulature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing is acceptable. Yeah, some of that I included just because of evaluating the structure's impact on the adjacent buildings. Landscaping, screening, and site furnishings. Site furnishings, including fencing, seating, other types of furniture visible from the street or side yards. The landscaping, does landscaping obscure or undermine the architectural patterns or elements of historic buildings, mechanical equipment screening, all of those are acceptable. And they're talking about new buildings yeah. criteria. There's some stuff in there that kind of applies. I mean, I know it's not new, it's new to this location. So it, again, it's an existing building, but in a new location. So it really doesn't change the appearance of the structure itself. 
Mm -hmm. It's not an historic building. No, yes. it's not a historic mm -hmm. building. I didn't put those in there. And it just says construction methods and materials compatible with historic materials and styles, especially in the neighborhood. Acceptable scale and massing, acceptable. Orientation, acceptable. Continuity of physical elements, such as yards, fences, evergreen, masses, or building facades, acceptable. Context and connectivity, acceptable. Accessory buildings and structures, and that's acceptable. All in favor of the application as proposed, raise your hand and or speak Eric. your names. This is Martha, I say yes. Okay, application. It, it, it's, it's late now, but a couple of questions. Yeah, of course. Has, has anybody uh, else objected to this the process or the actual Proposal. No, no, no. Yeah, and this is uh, that we haven't gotten any written comments from anybody in our office on this. Uh, Cameron, if you come yes, and just sign on the bottom here. And then I do have to do an administrative site plan report and try and get written comments if they're going to have them, but Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Very you. Much. I you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good rest of your evening. <laughs> you too. We can Have go, a good night. We can go forward to the next application for 34 Barry Street, Washington County Mental Health edition of building signage. Welcome, Jay. Hello, all. <laughs> and let me know if you want me to share anything on the screen, Jay. Okay, so you guys, each, everyone has the application before them, correct? Yes. The work uh, had been mostly done on the building itself, and they've occupied, but had Jay, not gone. Yeah. Excuse me, Jay, can you yep. pull the microphone a little closer to yourself? Fortunate. <laughs> <laughs> or just speak up. I try not to swallow it. Okay. Um, Thank you. But had not gone through the design review process for signage, which is what is before you. Um, I think we have a total of 27.32 square feet with an allowable 334. Um, there is a sheet that is a combination of site plan and elevations, which you have that shows on the site where these uh, four signs will be located that relate to the different functions within the building. Uh, so there'll be a pair of them that would be on the front facade and then uh, actually three of them, one of them, there's a directional sign that is repeated. There are two of the directional signs that help people know to which door to go. And then three signs on the west side or Downing Street. Uh, within your package is also a photograph of the existing building uh, as it sits now with having had most, most of its architectural work done. Uh, I would point out that in the previous application, that there was there was an interest on the part of the owner to sort of some deco detailing, and we had done some banding on both the front and and west facade. In our proposal, we're actually reducing that somewhat to be more be a little bit simplified, which you see in the previous sheet, uh, south elevation, basically only two bands uh, on the building, and then a portion that wraps around the side to the west. The other work has been been completed. Um, on the west side, there were some structural work that needed to be done uh, with some headers within the block, and those we ended up sort of accenting and painting so that that, with several of the overhangs over the doors, we felt was sort of sufficient uh, and didn't add the additional banding there. Um, you have in your packet the uh, exhibits from wood and wood that would be doing the signage. So there's uh, an exhibit for each sign. And there, there's a color that has been submitted to you for the blue. And then the letters which will be raised are a silver metallic. Both the signage and any of the banding will be applied 
uh, and fastened at points of mortar rather than into brick. And they will be sort of concealed fasteners. That little that uh, sketch you see right there is one from Wood and Wood uh, that shows how the letter will be attached to the sign itself and then the sign to the building. I didn't hear it. Is this going in the brick or not? No, it goes into the mortar between. Okay. Same with the uh, the banding. And the banding will be held off with spacers so it's not actually against the building itself. You think those bolts are big enough to hold it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so. Uh, one thing that I noted and actually mentioned to Meredith, there are there had been some customer only parking signs on the building, and they've had some issues, and they have left those on and would like to leave them. They're pre existing, and I guess they're considered sort of directional. I think I might recommend the two of them be removed because they're about where we'd like to place uh, the new signage, but that leave the others. Uh, to hopefully control parking. So that's kind of a quick overview. If you have questions, I'd be happy to answer. Jay, what material is the sign? The signs are, let me look at their detail. Oh, if that's a uh, MDO, let me look. They look. Let's see. I'm not seeing on their detail. Uh, I know it's a it's a painted raised metallic for the letters, the graphics. Um, it's on the bottom. Uh, one inch thick HD sign foam painted. Oh, yeah. So that's a high density um, foam that's often used for signage, and that it doesn't rot. Okay. And then they use a high quality paint. Thank you. We've worked with wood and wood for years, as probably you guys have, and they certainly do a good job. And they would be doing the installation itself. Any committee members have any comments, questions, or suggestions? Not for me. Okay. Again, I can go through the criteria for the signs. Size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the design review overlay district shall be compatible with the building and structures of the site and surrounding properties. Question, was there any additional lighting to be added? No, nope, okay. just ambient light that exists. Okay. Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures. These signs in, this, in these locations are acceptable. If a building has multiple tenants, there should be consistency in placement and size. With this is acceptable for the tenant. It is recommended the sign placement to be centered over building entries. In this particular location, these signs are appropriate. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials. Again, the signs are mounted in the mortar joints, so that's acceptable. In masonry buildings, again, they specifically suggest fasteners, so shall be in the mortar joints, which is in the application. Sign design, color, and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings, acceptable. Science support structures should be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves. That's acceptable. Lighting fixtures or signs on facades of historic, build historic buildings shall not conflict with or damage the building's architectural integrity. There's no additional lighting applied for, so that's acceptable. Lighting fixtures, again, none added, so that's acceptable. And again, at your comment about in the, the existing signs may be removed if they don't serve any more purpose or for your design purposes, any existing signs may be removed at the discretion of the applicant. Okay, sounds good. All in favor of the application? Speak Eric. Your, uh, speak your names. Martha, yes. And Steve, yes.
update it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dave, we could sign this. Since, now that we are actually meeting in person, you have a pen. I do. Sign that in there. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have a copy of the next application. I can give you mine. Oh. <laughs> and we can go to the next application for for Langdon Street Interstate Enterprises. Uh, here's Churchill. Come have a seat. Well, welcome back. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, make sure whoever's speaking the most is next to the microphone. <laughs> Yes, we're back. We're ready yes. to get really close. We're ready to put a sign on the building and uh, we presented our design. Um, we'd like to do a two phase corner sign that you can see from down Langdon Street when you're driving down that way and the other side from the front of the building or even across the bridge. Um, and then the one hanging on the existing. Um, other side, Elm Street side. This corner of the building, we'll, you'll, we'll read the same this way and this way? Yes, yeah, so it'll just wrap around. Okay. But the same exact, yeah. Yes. That's what I thought, but I just wanted to confirm yeah, we didn't, that. We didn't draw it. And that, that drawing right there is a little misrepresentative because it Could looks it like it, it's actually off of the, the corner. It will actually hug wrap. the It'll be right. tight to the corner board. Yeah. 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 I, <laughs> I don't have a vote, but I like it. <laughs> well, yeah, well, they, and we are planning with our new colors. This is the blue. I, th I thought I gave you a swatch. I'm not sure if I did of the blue, which is extremely close to this one. Extremely close to the one that was in the previous application, you said, and or what's on here? On this, this, this picture. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, or the color on my hand. I mean, and <laughs> to be clear, I think it does state in there it's not paint. I'm going to have it cut out with a CNC machine. So the blue you're looking at is actually on the trim. Coming through. It's, it's yeah. cut through the metal. Yeah. The stainless steel yeah. will be cut with a laser. Machine. This is a curiosity question, but does the building overhead owner have any plans to do any painting of the, of the rest of the trim? We've already started. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I'm painting. We're painting the whole building. Is that the actual okay. color? It's it's a close representation of the trim color. The body color is a is a light gray. Okay. So there's the historical light gray color for the majority of the building. The two four column, the two the four columns will be blue, and then some stairwell trim and the shutters. I believe the doorway, too. but very little trim. The accents really with the blue where the sign is. And yeah, so the two side pieces and then the, and the uh, shutters will be blue, but the rest of it um, is the historical gray color that we show. Just in terms of the color, I'm not sure if that's the actual color of the blue, but if in looking at the blue color to go with the gray trim, there is actually a color called a Williamsburg blue, which is totally historic since that was several hundred years old. Uh, that you may want to take a look at that goes really nicely with the gray. Well, we we did choose these from the historic. So oh, okay. So yeah, it might be. It may actually be that that color. Good. And it's nice that your diagram shows that where the sign is located, that you can see the trim around the sign, including along the edge here. Right. Yeah, just little, little things. <coughs> My sister works for Wood and Wood. Oh, okay. <laughs> so she helped design it. I thought. I'd, well, that's good. I throw that in there because one of the criteria <clears throat> is trying not to cover up architectural details, and corner boards are important architectural detail. So as long as some of that corner board is exposed along the edge, that's that's helpful. Yeah, we wanted to use the architecture in a sense. It also helps frame your sign. Yeah, exactly. 
the uh, the nails that you see on the uh, the signs aren't going to be graphics. I'm going to actually um, forge bent nails and attach them to. They'll be real in a sense, not just paint. Three dimensions. Yeah. More like sculpture. And the, than, than on the corner one, it wraps around one way, and then the other one wraps around the other way. Yeah. Kind of like that. You may want to seal those so that as they weather, they're not, you don't get rust dripping down your I side. Thought, yeah, I thought of that, but I also, I, rust is my favorite color, <laughs> personally, <laughs> but I, I, do, I do understand what you're saying. <laughs> so I love don't, to see what nature does just, to metal. And stuff, yeah. It's nice if they look rusty, but you don't want to spoil your sign yeah, with exactly. dripping. <laughs> no, I'm going to, I think I'm going to paint them with a, uh, uh, black tractor paint so, yeah, <laughs> makes the place look like, like it's been there for years yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> it happens <laughs> any committee members have any additional questions oh I, I don't know if i mentioned it will be stainless steel so it won't rust the okay. sign itself yeah, yeah. okay good <laughs> <laughs> much to my chagrin but yeah. <laughs> no. i i'm i i have a question because we we were just We've been kind of tossing the lighting of it. Is this something that if we decide to do in the future, we have to come back to and yeah. Okay. Unless unless you have some ideas to throw around with them where they could approve something, but then I would actually need more details on the specific bulbs and lamps and everything to approve the actual permit. Are there any recommendations for I mean, we don't would you want to light all the signs or just the one over the front door? The corner. I, yeah, I don't want to do the one on um, on Elm Street, not right. the side door sign. No, just just the uh, the bent sign on the uh, on both the Langdon and uh, basically the river sign. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that's a good good title for it for sure. I would suggest that if you do that, do something very simple. Yeah, we were even thinking a little solar powered, you know, down angled spot, something like that. Is there any electricity on the corner available for a sign? Uh, well, they, light? there are existing lights now. You might be able to see in the picture above the window spaces because they had their signs in the windows. So we could technically extend right from that. I don't know if you can blow up the picture on the computer, but the front uh, of the that front picture of the building, the big picture windows. There's a uh, oh, the picture windows. Yeah, so the big. Well, it's a, this has got your drawing of your new windows over it. <laughs> oh, so she did. Oh, that she may have deleted those. So anyway, those have down lights on them right now, and okay. uh, so we made delete those and I don't know because we're not going to have make, signage or painting on the windows. They actually make a different sizes of a, a down a down wash solar light and based on the exposure of this building you're in an ideal spot to pick up oh, it's solar. very sunny, yes. And so I love the idea of not paying any more electric. A black, a black fixture. Yep. That has a black solar panel on the top angle. Oh, so the top angle is the shade. And then a down wash yeah. light. That's great. Yeah. Would be ideal. And then you don't have to deal with any electrical issues. I, I love that idea. Yeah, if you can find one and that fits what they're gonna put maybe in as an you option. Send you a picture of it or send me a, a picture. I'll need I'll need details on it, like the spec sheet and details on how many um what the lumen output is lumen on the bulb. Output. Okay. Um and that's how I can, and then we'll need details on other exterior lights on the building because okay. there's a. Um, and they obviously it, use LED lighting, but yeah. you would want an LED that has a, a, what they call a soft white, which is something 3000 K or, or less, okay. but that's, that's fairly common to find. Okay. But that would be. That yeah, would, I don't uh, think that we would really be ideal because the... they just mount up there and they yeah. do they do have a battery since it's solar and it's rechargeable, but but those batteries are 
Yeah, like e that, that e go, easy to replace it every four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's a time or two you can. Yeah. You can get them with a timer so that they'll charge during the day and they come on at dark and then they'll last for X number of hours. Great. And on a downwash, it's, it's not going to go out into the street or beyond anyway. It'll hmm. just downwash. Yeah downwash the sign itself. I was looking at some little stair ones, feel like a similar concept, I feel like. So that's, I like that. Thing. Yeah, and because it's stainless steel, we're not gonna need a lot of light mm -hmm. to, to light it up. So that'll work. Uh, Steve, I do have a comment. Um, is the representation of the color that's on the page here. Is that a true representation of the blue? It's very close, but the, it, it's clashing with the actual building color now. Yeah, I it's, know, I it's, it's going to be a, a light gray, so it, they go really well together. That, that color just seems really harsh to me. Well, and, it definitely is with the, the yellow and green. It's a horrible combination. <laughs> I think I, I know the color that Steve was referring to, the Williamsburg color, and I would prefer something along those lines. Well, those are just my comments. Well, I, I would uh, I would like you to see the gray with it. We can we can show you, you know, the body paint with the blue. It's much easier to look at. <laughs> Do you know what the gray is called? Not off the top of our head. Okay. Yeah. It's just something I could pull up and show, but. Right. It's a, it's, a, it's a very pale gray. Well, we can get a picture. We could probably get a, a graphic person to. I asked her to try to make that gray. Oh, really? <laughs> a <little bit laughs> okay. Yeah, that's not good to help a lot. But, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's also, I mean, it's the, the under our current regulations, you can get comments from the DRC on the color, but we actually, if it's an already painted surface, we can't actually like make conditions yeah. about the color, but you can get guidance from them because right. that's one of the things they're here for. What is the, what's the, the name of the blue? Uh, Williamsburg. Williamsburg. Yeah, well, it's a, in a Williamsburg uh, color scheme mm -hmm. and it's, it's a, a dark blue with gray in it and the other then you may even want to look at it using it for your sign as well, because the readability of your sign depends on contrast as much as size of the lettering. The lettering is fine. The more contrast you create, the more readable the sign is. And that Williamsburg blue color, uh, they have it in a palette that you I get, not to recommend any particular kind of paint. But uh, Sherwin Williams and some of the others That's have his, historic yeah. colors, and the historic Williamsburg blue actually has gray in it, which softens it a little, gives it a darker color, and might be really nicely compatible with your gray base that you're going with. And also work with the stainless steel on the projecting sign really well, you think too? Yes. Cool. I mean, that built, it's a nice historic building and to paint that and get it looking really nice again, using historic colors would really make it pop. Makes it, makes it nice. We yes. put a little bit of the gray on already and it's kind of shocking <laughs> how nice it looks, <laughs> the difference. It says something when gray pops. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> the, the blue, you can get a gray that looks really nice. The bar was very low. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just, it, it doesn't pop as much as it makes the building stand out. Yeah. It makes it look, period. Well, that building has looked rough for The building looks, period, in its own <laughs> It has an unintended gray tent. <laughs> we started to paint. I said, oh, gosh, should we? Because yeah. I, was, I was afraid it was taking away its charm. <laughs> and that used to be a paint store. Right. Yeah, yes, I know. Right. I love that piece of it. 
I can't go through the criteria for the for the signs. And if anybody has any comments or questions before that, uh, either that or wait till after I go through. Size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior design, exterior signs within the design review district shall be compatible with the building and structures of the site and surrounding properties, acceptable. Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures. The location of these signs is acceptable. If a building has multiple tenants, shall be, shall be consistency. There's only one tenant with this, these signs. Recommended the sign placement be centered over building entries. In this particular case, it's more appropriate. And there's more room to put them where they are proposed, acceptable. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials, acceptable. Masonry buildings not applicable. Sign design, color, and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings, acceptable. Sign support structures shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant, acceptable. Lighting fixtures for signs on facades of historic buildings shall not conflict with or damage the building's architectural integrity or cover or impact character defining architectural features. Acceptable. And what we recommended was a black color down light wash light fixture, preferably solar powered at your discretion, may be installed over on both sides of the corner board signs. And lastly, lighting fixtures for signs mounted on all building facades shall be designed with appropriate housing, shielding, and photometrics to ensure that there is appropriate lighting levels and illumination that focuses on the sign panels exclusively. And again, with a downwash, that is acceptable. Any, do I hear a, a vote from committee members? Martha? Yeah, I vote yes with my comments about the color. Okay. And again, I just added that the, based on Martha's comment that recommending a blue color, i.e. a dark blue Williamsburg is dark color as, as much as possible. Hey. Steven, can I ask you one thing about, I just make sure we're on the same page with the light. Um, the solar lights that I'm familiar with, it's the solar panel and then the light, but you're saying they make the solar panel is the light? Like it's one, it's one, it's one fixture. Okay, good. And it has a solar panel. It has a, it, it has a, a flat back. And then the solar panel comes down like this. And then the light, they have in different, different angles, but the solar panel comes down in an angle like that. And then the light is down below. So if this is a sign the solar panel, <laughs> the solar panel is up here, and then the light is down here. Okay, yeah. yeah. So there isn't a solar and panel with a wire, and then the light. I don't like that look. So no, no, no. This is this is just okay. a, 
I mean, I, I bought a box of them for, I don't know, 40 bucks. I didn't know and I use, I use them on a garage. Yeah. Okay. And Perfect. there's a, this, this thing, you lift it up and there's a battery that tucks in in the back so it's protected from the weather. Okay. And then again, the solar panel is like this. And then the light is here and the, you can buy them with different angles. So okay. this is the light here and this is the solar up here. Yeah, that's it's just one unit. You pop the battery in it, screw it to the wall and it slides down and holds it in place. And then if you remove it to replace the battery every few years, you just lift it up, pop it off. And they, you can get these with a timer that will actually shut them off at a particular time. Although with a downwash, it's a soft enough light you can get it with the right angle here, so it's just washing down your sun. Okay. Good. 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 Most yep. of them are either 45 or 60 angle, so depending on where you are. 45 seem to work fine it. here. That's a good average. <laughs> well, summer it's higher, winter it's lower. <laughs> Thank you very much. You thank you. Most, you need the most charging. See you again soon. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, if you get me the cut sheet, details like find what light you want to use yeah, so and email that to me so that we can get the lumen data and stuff and let me know what other exterior lights are in the building i can't remember if there are any or existing lights. yeah existing lights because we have to make sure that the building as a whole doesn't issue too much light yeah, yeah. right so send me that information we may have some of it in the in the file i just don't know how long those lights have been there that are there yeah and if you if you want to refer to the lumens, you can pick the lumen which is off of a 60 watt LED bulb, and you can use that figure to compare it to because these have the little the little tiny LEDs have usually their multiples, um, but the fixture itself will have a it will tell you what set we... set number of lumens, and you can compare that to a 60 watt LED bulb. So just send me that information and. Um... Because yeah, once you throw the lights in, we have to do an administrative site plan report. So, so get me that information and then we'll be able to finish it up. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, good luck with your project. Okay. Has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes from August 16th? Look good to me. I'll move approval. And I'll second it. All in favor, raise your hand and or speak your name. Eric. Martha, yes. Okay, minutes are approved. Anybody have anything else to add? Well, uh, Meredith left a nice note about the design review meeting. Just your, your uh, mic. Meredith is left a nice note about the design, about the Historic Preservation Commission meeting and our hope to have some design review uh, people participating uh, just so we do it right. That's useful. Okay. Maybe yes, September 14th. Yep, next Tuesday. Yes. Week from today. Okay, without any further ado, since our next meeting is Monday, September the 20th, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. I move to adjourn. All in favor, raise your hand or speak your names. Eric. Steve. Martha. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. Yeah. And Meredith, I'll drop off the packet just so that you can have the envelope back in the next couple of days, okay? Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs>